hello everybody, this is Josh Becerra from Gurian. I'm here with Josh Werner, who is uh, Director of Demand Gen at Calabrio. Thanks for being here, Josh. Happy to be here, thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome. So we're doing this segment uh, with SaaS marketers on kind of how you work. And so I've got a couple of different questions for you. Maybe you could give us just a, a real quick rundown of uh, Calabrio and your role, and then We'd love to hear about uh, how you're investing your marketing dollars. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So uh, as Josh mentioned, I'm the director of demand generation and it's a wide variety of activities, but it's really largely how do you drive prospect and customer demand uh, through all the different ways that you can go about doing that. And we primarily, my, me and my team primarily focus on uh, digital marketing, uh, the website and SEO aspects. Um, we get, really get involved with content as well. Uh, but marketing operations and automation events. And um, I also have a business development team uh, that reports through me. So they are, they are a big part of this process. And largely my team is the, the team that bridges that gap between marketing and sales and yep. do that really warm handoff where we're giving really qualified opportunities. Yeah, I will say a little bit about Calabrio too. We're we're on this, you know, hockey growth curve just straight up. And so um, it's a good it, it place makes, to be. Yeah, it is. It's fun, but it's crazy. We're a growing company. And so with that, I mean, you got to be the right person to kind of be able to deal with that, but it's changing constantly. Uh, we're going through a series, you know, of acquisitions. We most recently acquired this company named Teleopti out of uh, Sweden. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, I'll talk about this during our conversation, but just the global nature of these type of programs is, is something that's uh, different and new, a uh, new challenge. And it's, it's been fun. We're, yeah. we're getting after it though. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate, I know you're a busy guy and you're uh, running around a little bit with your hair on fire with all the acquisitions and things, but thanks for taking the time. So uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about like where you're seeing great returns and uh, what you're focusing on right now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think the biggest one, and people have heard this, this is, you know, I'm not the first person to say this by any means, but uh, account-based targeting programs or, you know, very commonly account-based marketing programs, yep. but we call them targeting because it's very much in partnership with sales um, uh, on this. So, you know, what we found through that is is taking that really laser focus kind of sniper approach to accounts is the, 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 re the returns are so much greater when we do that. We can really focus on driving demand um, in enterprise level accounts. That's been something that we've had an initiative around that we want to go after enterprise level. And this was our way to do that. So you got to look holistically uh, at the, the buying committee and team at these organizations. So taking a wider view than just a one-off lead um, and, and bringing that all together is, is something that we're, we're very much focused on. And uh, we launched our first program at the end of 2017. And we continue year after year to invest more heavily in in that aspect uh, to the tune of, um, you know, I've got a team of eight BDRs, global BDRs right now. Wow. Um, we're asking for 11 more next year to be able to support <laughs> sales growth. That's and, some hockey um, stick growth. Yeah, yeah it is. And, and it is, it's exciting time on, on the team. Just, you know, they are such an in, uh, instrumental part of this program and allow us to, to go out. We can scale a lot of the marketing programs, but when it comes to the prospecting efforts that, that matter, yeah. Uh, yeah. that that needs to, to happen with the BDR uh, team. So, right. um, so that's a big area, but we're also investing in some of the just normal, uh, I think, digital things like SEO is a big thing for us. We've got, sure. been going over a big SEO project the last uh, last year to stand up pillar content, just mm -hmm. write content a little bit differently um, and make sure that we're ranking in, in, in the search engines and, um, you know, then converting them into our database for ongoing nurture and, and getting them in the hands of a BDR. So uh, we're working on that that engagement aspect of, of digital as well. Yeah. So. A uh, couple things. So around like the SEO side uh, with the content, how are you um, going about creating that? Do you have a internal team? Like where? How are you identifying what the kind of hub or the topic areas are, and then who's doing the writing for you? Like how? Yeah. How are you set up? Well, it's a kind of a hodgepodge here a little bit. We work through a variety of people, but we have uh, well, largely why we started it is because you know a lot of 
businesses, especially SaaS companies, are in the same boat. You write like product-related content or your your product content, but that's not definitive content on a topic, and it's right. talking about the, the the product and and that type of thing. So it's a different level. It's it's a different type of search intent you're going for when you're when you're putting together like pillar pages. So we had a pretty cl clear definition of what our core pillars were and it's it's based off of the things that we sell for in the market sure but then you need all this cluster content around it and you write it in a thought leadership way and where we haven't been as focused in the past is formatting those those blogs to have the right h tags and you know titles and yeah the and technical really seo yeah. Around it. yeah i mean it's that on-page stuff that matters too right mm -hmm. and, and just uh having it be long form so it's definitive in the eyes of Google and then interlinking that, that that content in with other content and and whatnot so we're going through this long process of doing that right now yeah, and super smart it's been a, a series of working with internal experts to help us craft content we work with an external um, uh, content agency called words at work in town that mm -hmm. does a fantastic job of of building out content for us, so we're, cool. we're kind of big borrow and steal it from wherever we can to kind of <laughs> format what you know what we need. But uh, we work through a bevy of people. Yeah, cool. So uh, when it comes to like account-based marketing, you were talking about this earlier. Um, my experience is, in order to really do that well, there's two key things. One is you got to have the right tech stack, and you got to understand. So like like there's a marketing automation play in there. Um, so tech stack is really important if you want to do it right. And then secondly, the, that sales handoff. So like the, um, alignment between sales and marketing really has to be uh, good and there has to be good data flowing into kind of CRM so that, uh, marketing can take advantage of that data to help, um, salespeople maybe prioritize like who the hottest leads are and things like that. So, Tell us a little bit about like your tech stack and then how you guys are kind of managing that sales and marketing alignment. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, and I'm just very lucky to have a very robust tech stack here mm -hmm. that allows us to be able to do that. So from outbound program, you know, we, we use so many tools, just like many marketing, uh, you know, Google Analytics and stuff, all this free stuff. Yep. But like core technology that we're like, spending a significant amount of budget on that really drive these ABT programs for us is, uh, you know, everything centers around Salesforce and Pardot. Salesforce is like the centralized uh, working zone and all the notes. It, it, that's yep. where the sales and BDR uh, team works off of. So we look to roll up everything under an account record in, in Salesforce. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have Pardot, which is the brains behind the operation and allows you to do all the it's, it, I call it all the time the backbone behind everything that we do because it's like the the smarts of it, like yeah. how are you going to route things, um, right. the notification engine. You know, there's a lot of communication engine in there, and so obviously everything re revolves around that. Yep. But then we have got some other cool technology. We have Terminus that we utilize for display advertising and okay. intent monitor, uh, intent monitoring, mm -hmm. uh, and multi-touch attribution reporting, and and those things are all critical. But the the intent monitoring there is really important because that helps us boil up accounts and bring to the table accounts that we feel like we should be going after based on search intent sure. um, at these organizations. And it also allows us to see accounts that have been interacting with our digital properties, which is, uh, again, another way to prioritize. I mean, a big, a huge thing with, with account-based targeting programs uh, is it's not that... Uh, it's scaling it too too big is the the problem. It's it's focusing on the the best accounts that you can yeah, go after. That prioritization. In order, in order to do that correctly and and go into the large buying team and prospect you know appropriately, it, it, it takes a lot of time. Yep. And so you got to focus on the best view. Cool. Uh, Terminus allows us to do that and reach them with the display. We also use Zoom Info for uh, firmographic hmm. contact mapping. Okay. Cool. Uh, LinkedIn sales navigator is important from a prospecting a angle and research uh, of prospects. We use outreach.io. That's a prospecting automation tech. And so it's, it's the BDRs yeah. have done that all day. It's basically what their day of prospecting is in front of them. Very critical to our success. Um, so adds a lot of efficiency. It sounds like you're a, a huge advocate for like leveraging tools and getting as much data as you possibly can. And then like using that to help the, the sales team really prioritize. 
Yeah, I mean, with any of this, though, I mean, you can't just go out and get a big tech stack and be like, boof, man, I got myself an ABT strategy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just It just fuels it. And so if you yeah. don't have people to run this stuff, if you don't have people to act on the data, um, it, you know, you got you to gotta kind of get the your priorities straight with how you're going to run a program like this. So yep. don't go out and just go buy a big tech stack and thinking that's going to solve it. You need right. the right people to be able to manage that and and leverage the data. So yeah, that's you, good you advice. Another question. Yeah, you asked another question around data and all that. Yeah, sure. Data is is going to inform our, our efforts here, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm in a really lucky position where I, I manage BDRs. So they do like 80% of the prospecting when it comes to these targeted accounts. And yep. uh, that what sales rep is not going to love to have that type of a resource. And so that's a natural connection point between me and the sales teams. And the, the BDRs partner very closely every day with, with their sales reps. And we're aligned to very, you know, the same goals. Um, and so for, for me, that sales alignment has been uh, easier than in the past when yeah. you are like just working with a sales department to, hey, go prospect. Right. They, they don't love doing that. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah that helps. extra layer, that extra layer kind of helps as a buffer and acts as a translator, I would say. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So uh, you had kind of alluded to some of this earlier, but uh, biggest challenge today that you you're facing yeah, for me, it's scaling these programs that we've built in North America and, and making them global programs. So mm -hmm. while we have had global operations um, uh, after this acquisition uh, that we had, especially of this Teleopti product, uh, they were largely, I think, like 70% of their uh, revenue came from international markets, right? Yeah. And that's good from from a Calabrio perspective because we're just broadening our our uh, uh, our reach. Yep. But it it adds challenges in markets that I haven't necessarily been in or heavy in and really focused our time and effort. So I'm doing a lot of work right now between, okay, what countries absolutely need to be spoken to in their native language and how do we, what assets then do we need for that? And, sure. and, and can the tech go out and reach these people in a wider, uh, you know, um, in a wider geographic region. So um, it's been kind of fun to go back to the drawing board with some of that stuff. And we're going to kind of <laughs> see what works and, yeah. you know, kind of, from it like we like we always do but yeah that kind of keeps me that keeps me up at night those are things that i i got you know we're, we're doing a lot of planning around that right now yeah are you starting to like uh see the need for like a distributed team and everything then as well across the globe and managing all that are yeah still... and that naturally happens so i you know during some of this uh, you know this acquisition and just as it's collaborative grows organically um we i i have a bdr team in london um, as well as here in Minneapolis and in, in our headquarters. But um, I also have a marketing team in Stockholm, Sweden. So they are largely, you know, um, know that re those regional differences, but we, we, we approach things a little bit differently than maybe they did. And so we got to rethink how, how we're doing that. And that BDR layer is is a really big thing that Teleopi actually didn't have. And not, now, you know, we do and we're introducing that. So we're, yeah. we're going through that transition. That's great. All right. So last question is about kind of, what you're excited about for 2020 from a idea experiment standpoint or anything that you, you see on the horizon? Yeah, I, I gave this some thought because okay. we obviously kind of uh, talked about what questions we'd be asking here. And yep. I, I got two things and I don't think that <laughs> they're like crazy forward thinking things, but they're things that like for Calabrio at all, the right time here, we're ready to hit these things. So. You know, one of the things is making the prospect and, and customer journey more personalized. And, and we'll look at this like website, uh, more granular persona development, um, and, and, you know, just understanding the needs of specific people and being able to talk in their language more. The more that we can do that, uh, the better. It just makes your, your message resonate. So. Um, but I would also say the other thing, and there's a lot of technology that's allowing this to happen. And, and really, I, I don't think this is going away, but just an account based approach versus a contact or lead specific approach. So you're not looking at things as like the, the small sums of like, okay, we got a lead for just this person. Sure, you got to look at that, but what does that boil up to from an account perspective? Sure. I mean, I, I think the last stat I, I read is something like there's 11 decision makers in a, in a B2B enterprise level. Tech, tech purchase. Yep. So we got to go. We got to go get all those people on board and and <laughs> and connect uh, them all under one kind of uh, account in the CRM and understand who's interacting with the site and and everything. 
Yeah, and that's not as easy. I mean, it's not as easy as it, it sounds like maybe right. it should be. But there are tools and technology that are coming out to, to help in that. But, yep. again, you need the right people to be able to act on that and, and, and bring it together. And and so we're we're working through that. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's kind of a – it's a work in progress. But, um, you know, a lead to account mapping tool is a big thing to, in order to help that. And that it starts there, but then there's more insights that you can gain. So sure. uh, that's where we're going. Okay. Well, Awesome. Well, I really appreciate your time, man. This was great. Uh, continue that hockey stick growth. Get get out there. Uh, you know, travel to go to Sweden and make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Well, uh, happy, happy to have joined you, and yeah. um, you know, hopefully this helps some other people in, in the similar situations. Yeah, for sure. It's super fun. All right. Thanks, Josh. Take All it right, easy. We'll see ya. All right. Bye.